the civilization of old Europe. Maria Gimbutas considered the earliest agrarian societies of old Europe not only to be non-Indo-European, but also egalitarian, highly artistic and peaceful. She defined old Europe as a true civilization in the best meaning of the word. At its fluorescence during the 5th and early 4th millennia BCE, the old Europeans constructed large towns with spacious houses and temples with multiple rooms and stories. Skilled artisans produced elegant ceramics and weavings. The early metallurgists did not produce weapons, but an array of symbolic images skillfully crafted in copper and gold. Moreover, a flourishing network of trade routes existed that circulated items such as obsidian, shells, marble, copper and salt over hundreds of kilometres. Gimbutas highlighted the incubation stage of old European civilization in terms of the development of a matristic social structure and wide-ranging production of symbolic imagery that typified the beliefs and rituals of people who were intimately bonded with the living world. With respect to old Europe's deep cultural roots, she states, all of this was not ex nihilo. The rich display of religious symbolism, which flowered in central Anatolia and in old Europe, is part of an unbroken continuity from upper Paleolithic times. In the course of the Neolithic transition, from hunting and gathering to plant cultivation in old Anatolia, with horticulture and agriculture as full-fledged manifestations, the activities of women and men were balanced during the development of sedentary life waves. Men still hunted, while women continued to refine their relationship with wild grains and edible plants. Community life advanced through mutual cooperation in the agrarian endeavour that included the development of animal husbandry. Neolithic farmers moved from Anatolia to the new world of the Balkan Peninsula during the 7th millennium BCE, where their domesticated plants, animals, tools and Neolithic knowledge. They successfully adapted and thrived in this new ecosystem by applying their millennial knowledge of plant cultivation. Between 1967 and 1980, Maria Gimbutas directed five major excavations of the Neolithic sites in Bosnia, Macedonia, Greece and southeastern Italy in order to investigate the lifeways of these early societies. These excavations took place nearly every summer over 13 years in collaboration with international universities, museums, Gimbutas' excavation of Obra in Bosnia 1967-1968 established the genesis and chronology of the Neolithic Butmir culture. In order to adequately study this treasure trove of prehistoric material, Gimbutas found it necessary to expand the parameters of archaeology to include an interdisciplinary focus, which he called archaeomythology. This field includes archaeology, comparative mythology, folklore, linguistics, comparative religions and other disciplines. Through the application of archaeomythology, Gimbutas began to recognise the main themes of old European ideology through the analysis of the symbols and images and discovery of their intrinsic order. In Gimbutas' view, the overwhelming preference of female imagery during the Neolithic period reflected people's concepts of the sacred source of life. The inevitability of death and regeneration rendered in female forms. Her use of the controversial term goddess has often been misunderstood, yet she clearly defines her meaning of the term in this way. 
The goddess in all her manifestations was a symbol of the unity of all life in nature. Her power was in water and stone, in tomb and cave, in animals and birds, snakes and fish, hills, trees and flowers. Hence the holistic and mythopoeic perception of the sacredness and mystery of all there is on earth. Old European communities were tuned to the cyclic realities of the living world, with no evidence of organised warfare. According to Gimbutas, the civilization that flourished in Old Europe between 6500 and 3500 BC and in Crete until 1450 BC enjoyed a long period of uninterrupted peaceful living which produced artistic expressions of graceful beauty and refinement demonstrating a higher quality of life than many androcratic class societies. Maria Gimbutas had a detailed knowledge of the archaeology of prehistoric Europe and of the Neolithic cultures of Old Europe with their rich iconography of goddesses and gods which she viewed as overwhelmed at the onset of the Bronze Age by the Kurgan invasions, incursions of nomadic pastalis in the steplands of the North Black Sea. This she saw as the key impetus which brought Old Europe to an end and which introduced to Europe a new population speaking early Indo-European languages. Her Kurgan invasion theory was viewed with reservations by several scholars, yet recent work on ancient DNA has given strong support to her views and brought them back into prominence. Since diverse models of civilization have been identified with divergent patterns of social development for each, the old paradigm of a linear and unilateral development of patriarchal society as an inevitable expression of social progress is obsolete and has to be abandoned. It is true that old Europe in its original fabric came to an end. However, this does not mean that all its traditions vanished. The cultural heritage of old Europe was not lost and descriptions of the lost world of old Europe are misleading. The cultural achievements and traditions of Europe's first advanced civilization lived on in numerous variations. The civilization of ancient Aegean, that is, the Minoan civilization of ancient Crete and Thera, perpetuated old European traditions. Old European culture continued on the island of Crete for several millennia, longer than on the mainland and reached a magnificent flowering in the first half of the second millennium BC.